Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Today we are going over our exponential graph skill in the foundational, medium, and advanced difficulty level. Make sure to subscribe before we get into it and let's get started. So uh, the graph of this exponential equation is shown, which the following is true. So we need to understand the format of our exponential equations, which takes the form of a parentheses bx, where b is our increasing or decreasing factor, increasing if it's greater than 1, decreasing if it's less than 1, and a is our y-intercept, uh, or, or when x is 0, um, the y value is going to be a. With our exponential equations, since b is equal to 1.15, that means y is going to be increasing at an increasing rate because exponential graphs are going to get steeper over time. And so choice A is correct here. We have another equation, this time a little bit of a different format as we have a vertical shift down to units. Which of the following characteristics of the graph is displayed as a constant or coefficient of the equation? So here we are given um, the numbers 4 and negative 2. We can see here, x-intercept is 0.5, that's not shown. y-intercept is negative 1, which is not shown. Slope, remember, these uh, 4 is an increasing rate. It is not the actual slope, because it is not a straight line. And then the value y approaches as x decreases. We can see as x decreases here, um, the y is approaching this negative 2, so, um, which is shown in our equation as negative 2. So that means answer choice D is correct. Now, if this one, based on the equation and the graph, which of the following statements is true? As x increases by 1, decreases by a certain amount, this is of linear equations, so we can cross both a and b out. As y increases by 1, uh, as x increases by 1, y halves. We can see here that our increasing factor is 1 half, so that makes sense. And then as x increases by 1, y, w, y doubles. So here it's 1 half. So we're going to be having, if there was a 2 inside the parentheses, y would be doubling. And choice C is correct here. Now on to this last one. Which of the following characteristics is displayed as a constant or coefficient? Uh, here we can see that the y-intercept is uh, 8. And then that is shown in our equation as 8. So that means that um, answer choice D is the correct answer here. On to our medium difficulty level. Uh, when graphs in the xy plane, here is our function equation, and it has a y-intercept at 0, comma k. That means we're going to substitute in 0 into our function, and then the corresponding y value is going to be equal to k. So we just take our equation, 3 parentheses 2, and replace x with a 0, plus 1. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. That means k is equal to 4. On to this next question, which of the following is displayed as a constant or coefficient here? We can see that this is just takes the a parentheses bx, where a is the y-intercept. So that means that the y-intercept is shown as that constant of 30. On to this question, which of the following equations represents this graph? So we just need to see here that this graph is decreasing. So that means that the b has to be less than 1. And the only answer choice where b is less than 1 is going to be answer choice b uh, with 0 0.75. The rest of these would be increasing. Um, if the function is graphed in the xy plane, what is the y-intercept? With a parentheses bx, a is the y-intercept. So that means the y-intercept is just answer choice d or 100. If you were not sure of this, just substitute 0 in for x, and the corresponding y value is our y-intercept. You'll see that it will still be 100. Now, on to our advanced difficulty level. We are given this equation, and we are trying to find the graph of y equals negative f of x. The easiest way to do this, in my opinion, instead of having to remember different transformations and what they look like in the graph, is to simply graph f of x into Desmos, and then... Um, and then manually input y equals negative f of x, and you'll see the answer. We can see clearly here when substituting in everything that the question provided us with that this blue graph is what our y function, well, is what our answer is going to be looking like. So we need to find an answer choice which most closely matches this. Answer choice A is the only one that matches that, so answer choice A is correct for this question. Now we have another one where f of x is a, parentheses 2 fifths to the power of x, and g of x is a 
parentheses b to the power of x and graph them in the plane, what, for what value of b would they be symmetrical with respect to the y-axis? So the first step here uh, is that we're just going to graph uh, f of x and then test out values of b that makes them look symmetrical according to the y-axis. So let's go ahead and do that in Desmos. We can see clearly here that taking the reciprocal of the b uh, creates a graph that is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. So when b is equal to 5 halves, um, which is a reciprocal of two-fifths, we can see that they are symmetrical. So that means that b is equal to five-halves. On to our second-to-last question, an exponential function is graphed. If the graph is always increasing and the y-intercept is 0, 6, which of the following could be an equation? So we know always increase increasing. So that crosses out answer choice A and B immediately. Since B in those is less than 1, that means that is experiencing exponential decay, which is decreasing. Now taking a look at C and D, uh, they're both increasing, and we need to see which one has a y-intercept of 0, 6. So when we substitute in 0 for x, let's try answer choice D. When we substitute in 0 for x, we have 4 parentheses, 2 to the power of 0 plus 2. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. So that means answer choice D is the correct answer fulfills both the y-intercept and the always increasing constraint as proposed by the question. On to our last answer here. Uh, we have this graph, which of the following is an equivalent form in which the base of the exponent is 2. So we can see clearly here that the base of the exponent is 2 means uh, the base of our exponential function or the b value needs to be equal to 2. So how we can do this is that we can rewrite 4 as just 2 to the power of 2 and then to the power of t. And then you may notice that um, according to our exponential rules, when power of a power, we can just multiply. So this is also equivalent to 80 parentheses 2 to the power of 2t. So this closely matches answer choice C, so it is correct. You could also double check by substituting each of these equations into Desmos and answer choice C is the only one that would um, look, graph the same as our function here. That is all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed going over these exponential graphs in our journey for SAT math preparation. The test is in a couple of weeks. I'll be ramping up uploads, but I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.